I've got Richard Klein here with me today. Over 100 episodes of Three's Company. During its run in the late 70s to mid 80s, he played Jack Tripper's best friend, Larry Dallas. And after Three's Company, Richard was in all sorts of uh, other television roles. The ones that come to my mind is there was a recurring role in It's a Living. And we were just talking about this before we started the interview. He was on The Love Boat numerous times. and. Just has had a great career in television. I, other shows that come to mind are Matlock or Murder, She Wrote. And I, even though he's best known for his comedic work on television, or he's also a classically trained singer, accomplished stage actor, a director, and all that makes a whole lot of sense once you realize that this guy has a Master of Fine Arts degree in theater. And I also feel it's important, this has nothing to do with his work on screen, but I feel it's important to note uh, Richard's service to our country during the Vietnam War. So thank you for your service, sir. With all that, I've got five questions that I'd like to ask Richard today, and I, I really appreciate you taking a few minutes with me. My pleasure. Okay, so here we go. If you could be any character on any other television show, who would it have been, or who would it be? That's a really tough question because, you know, come on, there's like, <laughs> if you look at the 50 greatest shows, I would like to be on 48 of them, <laughs> uh, you know, starting with Seinfeld, but I, I, I thought about this, and I think um, I'd like to be Sonny Crockett on Miami Vice. Oh, yeah. Because let's start with the clothes, okay? With the with the white suit and the pastel uh, t-shirts. So hip, so hip Fabulous. in the eighties. I mean, and then to work in Miami, uh, and uh, you know, and be in a procedural. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think that would be my, my first choice. Oh, yeah. That Don Johnson and Philip Michael Thomas, I think, was the... Uh, Philip other... Michael Thomas, yeah. yeah. They were so... Uh, that show was such a phenomenon, too, back then in the... Yeah. What was it? Late 80s? Mid 80s? I can't remember. I think it was early to mid. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and I, I had a white linen suit. Oh. <laughs> and I had, I had a turquoise T-shirt and... Uh, I think I might have had like white loafers. I mean, I was like, I just did the whole thing. I just thought it was a great, great look. I can see you rocking the part. Yeah. All right, all right. Great, great. I, I'm glad you mentioned Seinfeld too. You're right. There's probably a gazillion different roles that, that one, yeah. one look at and go, well, that would have been cool. A buddy of mine in the, oh my goodness, early 70s, mid 70s, Henry Winkler, he was from New York and, and, and we had mutual friends or whatever. And he said, you got to come to California because, you know, there's a lot of work. The next thing I turn around, he's the freaking Fonz. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm going, okay, maybe I should go to California. <laughs> yeah. Because I was in New York. I was a New York based actor, you know, doing stage work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, the first, the first TV show I ever did was a movie of the week called Seventh Avenue. It was about the garment district. Go figure, Seventh Avenue. Yeah. yeah. And uh, my love interest was Ann Archer. Wow. Holy cow. Holy cow. Yeah. I mean, before Fatal, you know, Fatal Attraction. I, well, she was with John Ritter in Hero at Large. I love that movie. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. are a font of information, Dave. Yeah, but uh, so that was my first uh, uh, first TV show. Wow. Right, right, right after the, you know, the army. And so was that, were you in New York or had you tried New York, shot in New California? York. No, shot in New York. Okay, cool. But you yeah. did eventually end up uh, heading uh, west, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. And did you stay there long after Three's Company or did you move back east? Oh, no, I stayed in LA for 29 years. Okay. I, I came back for nine months to do a Broadway show called City of Angels right. musical. Early uh, 90s, right? Early, I'm sorry, what? Early 90s, if I remember right. Yeah, correct. Yeah, 1991. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, so next question. In addition to acting, yeah. you also find time to help others. I did a video on you last year. One of the things I learned about you was about your acting classes and the coach that you are, the mentor that you are for so many people. So you, you find time to help others hone their skills as actors. Why is this important? Well, it's it's important for several reasons. I, I started, I think it grew out of uh, 
my directing exploits in in the early early 90s um i i, I was an actor at, i performed at burt reynolds theater in florida jupiter jupiter florida burt reynolds jupiter theater um i think two times and then burt asked me if i wanted to direct and you know i directed in class in college you know like short scenes or whatever but i never directed a full-length production and so I directed a production of Crimes of the Heart for him, and it was very successful. Uh, and so I sort of had the bug and I came back and I directed uh, my first, out of the gate, my first show was a, a show by Noel Coward called Present Laughter, which had been on, it's been on Broadway like with five different, like Kevin Klein did it and Nathan Lane and you know Frank Langella, whatever. Uh, but this was a small theater in Hollywood, and uh, Bert saw it, and like a week later, I got a call from the production manager of Evening Shade, the show that he was starring in with Mary Lou Hanna. <laughs> he said, uh, Bert would like you to direct one of the episodes. <laughs> so, so that's how that directing thing started, and I got the bug, and that naturally evolved to uh, me teaching in the, in the late nineties in, in LA and I'm still teaching now in, in, in New York. Um, but so it's twofold. First of all, as an actor, it keeps me sharp. I'm constantly reading scripts or reading sides, you know, audition, what they call audition sides, uh, to give to my students. I like to cast my students. They can bring things in. I, I encourage them if they want to bring things in, sure. But usually I look at them, whatever, see their work, and I provide material from which I get off the net. So it keeps keeps me uh, sharp as an actor. I mean, I'm constantly discussing audition techniques with them, right. camera techniques. So when it's my turn at that. Yeah, yeah you're you flexing know, those mean, muscles, right? You know, I'm not just sitting, yeah, exactly. I'm not sitting around waiting for you know, the agent to call or whatever. Um, the other thing is it gives me untold joy to see their progression not just if they get a job or, or two of course that's wonderful but coming in with maybe not all their skills in place and then progressing to becoming really good actors so that's you know that's a thrill for me and you know it's you talk about giving back you know you been in the business for over 50 years or whatever and you, and you want to give something back and so that's a great way to do it that's awesome. That's awesome. Untold joy. I love that. So if you could travel, let's pretend uh, that Doc Brown and his DeLorean is a real thing. If you could travel <laughs> back to any period of time, when would it be? You got the keys to the DeLorean, Richard. When would it be and why? Oh, boy, that's a toughie. Because, um, you know, you think of various eras and various historical events or whatever. Um, as an actor and a student of theater, I guess I would like to go back to Shakespeare's time and be in his company and drink with him. Yeah, yeah. And maybe like, you know, give him some suggestions for editing, you know. <laughs> you, you know, hey, Will. A little bit here. <laughs> Will, listen up. I mean, Iago is, he's, he's such a, a, a villain. I mean, can you make, can, is there any human characteristics you can give to him and just, you know, give him a few pointers. I love that. Yeah. What, a, what, a, what a trip that would be to actually be there, you know, in the time of well, shape. For openers to wear those tights. Yeah. Well, and none of the, uh, your, the actors were women, right? They were all men in drag as well, correct? Yeah, there were men in drag. Yeah. 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 So that yeah. was. I necessarily would not care to play Rosalind or, or Juliet, but <laughs> um, certainly any of the Henrys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's There's funny. Henry the Fourth, Henry the Fifth, Henry the Eighth, and Henry Fonda. Who, you know, <laughs> we all know. Love it. All right. So, uh, getting more serious, what are you most proud of? Very lengthy career, you know, life well lived. What, what are you most proud of? I, 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 I'm, I'm proud of the longevity. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've, I've never had to do another, like, side job uh, in my 
quote unquote theatrical career. I mean, when I first got out of the army in 1971, um, I, I started doing commercials. And so for the five years that I was in New York, I did a ton of commercials. So the income was always there. I, I did not have to wait tables or, you know, do other kind of temporary jobs. So I'm grateful for that. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm proud of that longevity. I'm, I'm proud of the teaching too. Yeah. You know, like getting back to your former question, I'm, I'm proud that I'd be able to be out there and, and helping others who, you know, want to be in this crazy business. Yeah. It, it strikes me that, uh, and I talked about a little bit in the video that I did on you is your, your work ethic. You never quit, right? You, there's lots of folks that at some point kind of just lean back and rest on their laurels. And it seems to me like you, you no. just, are always active, always doing things. No, I have, I have a very bad saying it's old actors never retire. They just forget their lines. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, that hit, that's hit home, hits home for me. I, oh, man, the older I get, the less I can remember, but <laughs> anyway, that's a, you know, it's amazing. I, you know, I mean, you can look me up at wiki, wiki. I'm, I'm, sort of mid 70s, but I understudied Nathan Lane on Broadway in a play by David Mamet called November. There was 133 pages of dialogue. He never leaves the stage. Never, I went on, I never forgot a line. That's, that is amazing. That is, yeah. but that's part of your craft, right? Is actually to be able to memorize. Well, some are more facile with it than others. I find, I guess you might call me a quick study. I, I don't really have too much trouble memorizing. Yeah. Knock on wood. I don't. I don't have too much trouble memorizing lines. So that's I don't know cool. if that's because of the repetition of the years and years or whatever. But uh, that's something to be proud of, right there. Maybe not most proud of, but definitely to have that memory and be able to be retain all that. That's incredible. Another thing I'm proud of is uh, my health. That I, you know, that I really am conscious and mindful of. Yeah. You know, staying in shape. I mean. It's important. I think I'm like five pounds over what I came out of the army. Wow. 70. Yeah. Wow. I might need to, after we get done with the interview, give me some pointers. <laughs> this this pandemic and the quarantine has been murder on my health. <laughs> I know. I know. Holy cow. All right. Last question. Just, it, it's kind of an open-ended question. Share something cool. Tell me something cool about you that maybe folks don't know. Well, I... There's, there's a, a cool thing that happened like late last year. This is, this is, a, this is a story that, uh, that's, that's kind of mind boggling. I got a, a, a message on Facebook from some guy who I didn't know saying, uh, hello, I'm, uh, I'm working with an, a, a law firm and we were clearing out an estate of this gentleman in Las Vegas and we found a belt buckle that belongs to you. It says Three's Company on it. And your name is engraved in the back. And I went, holy mackerel. When Don Knotts and I went to Vegas in 1983, I had this belt with the, they gave us for the 100th show or something, the 200th right. show or whatever it was. They gave us uh, these Three's Company belt buckles. And I came back from Vegas and it was missing. And I think perhaps the cleaning way, somebody got a hold of the belt buckle in my room, whatever. So this guy contacts me. I respond. He sends me the belt buckle 37 years later. That's oh, amazing. Oh my gosh. There it is. Can you see that? I can. Coming through loud and clear. Loud and clear. We can see it. Great. That's awesome. And it's engraved on the back where you can't see yeah. So I don't know if that answers your question. No, that's <laughs> super cool. And and to have you so many years ago and to have someone actually reach out and contact you. I, 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 could, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. So. Uh, and know, the memories yeah. associated with that, right? You just, even hanging yeah. out. The, the well, and, and the memory of, of Don Knotts and I in, uh, yeah. in Vegas, you can imagine because... <laughs> Don attracted women like flypaper. I mean, he just, it was hilarious. <laughs> you never think, oh, I'm dark not, you know? Yeah. No, you but, would not. Yeah, these, like, whatever. It was it was quite a fun weekend with the exception of me losing that belt buckle. Well, there you go. 
found its way home. Yeah. Richard, it has been an absolute honor. I, I just want to thank you so much. For thank you. Time. It's my pleasure. I love your channel. <laughs>